So uh, we're going to proceed now with the speaking program. And I'm going to introduce the governor. So uh, we should all recognize that Governor Baker is a big believer in the working port and the 7,000 blue collar jobs which the working port generates. And he was responsible for our being able to uh, work with the legislature for a $107.5 million commitment to strengthen the working port uh, and strengthen the Conley Container Terminal. Governor Baker is a frequent visitor and a big believer in South Boston, and he was a big fan of Tommy Butler and Tommy Butler's values and approach. So please join me in welcoming Governor Charlie Baker. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's, uh, it's really nice not to be standing in the rain um, because we've had plenty of that lately. And let me just say to the Butler family how much we appreciate your presence here today on this very special occasion. And as you can see, almost everybody who's ever been anybody in South Boston <laughs> is here today. And there's a reason for that. Because this, say what? He's taking notes. He's taking notes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely screwed up my train of thought. Um, but there's a big reason for that. Part of it has to do with, uh, with the namesake, who knew everyone and was a friend to all and a tremendous advocate for this community and especially for this part of town. But it's also because of how important uh, this project is to the continued development and the ongoing relationship between the residents of South Boston and those who make a living working here in South Boston. And I just want to spend a minute on that because for employers and for businesses, the amount of cargo that moves through this particular port and supports so much of New England is a monstrous connection to a global economy and a global marketplace. 1,600 businesses in New England use the port to import and export their goods. 7,000 jobs, 4.6 billion in economic activity, which makes it the sixth largest employer in Boston. And the Conley Terminal, as Tom Glenn points out to anyone he sees at any point in time on any day, has set three consecutive records for volume, 256,000 containers in FY 2017, and kudos uh, this has been said before to the longshoremen for the work they did to make much of this possible working with the folks here at the port. It's also a tremendous staple to the South Boston community and, employ and has employed neighborhood residents for generations. Now this particular freight corridor and buffer project is a $70 million project to construct a new two-thirds mile dedicated freight corridor and Truck Hall Road. Removed all the container traffic off of East First Street and parts of Summer Street as of September. New security screening and truck queuing areas to reduce congestion on, congestion on city streets. <laughs> and the mayor, after his comments last night about chairs and toilet seats, will like this one. It nearly doubles on-street parking opportunities for local residents from 57 spaces to 95. <laughs> it also includes construction of a new linear four and a half acre community open buffer space, which is gonna be built and maintained by the folks at Massport. It creates a noise and visual buffer from the port for nearby residents, 16 foot high wall, which separates the secure Conley terminal area from the public and mitigates sound, connects Castle Island to other DCR harbor parks and existing parks and playgrounds, a $400,000 dog park, I gotta defend myself. There's, there's, there's two dog parks. 
big dogs and little dogs. As we all know, though, it's not the size of the dog and the fight. It's the size of the fight and the dog. But this is all a result of collaboration between Massport, a ton of state agencies, a lot of local elected folks, the South Boston community, and the city. And it's named in honor of Thomas J. Butler, a native of South Boston, and a longtime Massport director of external affairs, but mostly a great guy, and exactly the type of person who so many people here in South Boston thought of and considered a friend. I just also... I just also want to say that um, we continue to really appreciate the ongoing collaboration and cooperation that we as an administration have had and Secretary Pollack and I and Secretary Ash and the other folks on our team talk about this all the time. The collaborative relationship we've had with so many of the folks in the legislative delegation, in city government, in Congress, Congressman Lynch, and so many others who are part of this wonderful community. And we continue to look forward to working with you to build a stronger, safer, better South Boston far into the future. Thank you very much. I guess he must own cats, Governor. I'm a small dog. Small dog, huh? Okay, so um, it's important to say that this project would not be where it is today were it not for the collaboration and the support of the mayor. Uh, from day one, the mayor has been a supporter of the whole project, the parking spaces, the connection to Summer Street. I was going to mention one other aspect, but now I'm afraid to mention that again. Uh, the great team that we work with on his behalf, Brian Golden, Gina Fiandaka, and most importantly, the mayor is here not just because of the project, but because of his own personal relationship with Tommy Butler. So with that, let me introduce Mayor Marty Walsh. Thank you very much, Tom. I want, to, uh, I want to thank you, Tom, and um, when you were talking about the dogs, Congressman Lynch got very excited because he is a champion for dogs in the United States Congress, so I want to thank you uh, for that um, and, the, and, the, and what you've done. Um, I'm going to try and be brief. I don't want to go too long. Uh, I know a bunch of elected officials are going to speak here today, but I want to give a shout out to a couple. Um, Jackie Hart, uh, state senator here in South Boston for a long time. Senate President Bulger is with us today. Thank you, Mr. President, for being with us today. <laughs> Mayor and Ambassador Flynn, thank you for being with us as well today. <laughs> President Trevellini is with us today. Thank you, Mr. President, for being with us today. <laughs> City Councilor Salamatina is with us today. Thank you, Councilor Salamatina. <laughs> Steve Murphy is with us today. Thank you, Steve. The Registrar, former City Councilor. <laughs> Representative Driscoll from Milton's with us today. Thank you, Representative. Uh, and uh, I see three other former reps I want to just give a quick shout out to. Uh, Representative Jim Brett, Representative Richie Rouse, Representative Dan Bosley, State Senator Paul White. The reason why I bring all these people up, um, these are all the people that I associate with Tommy Butler. Uh, when, I was, when I was growing up and getting involved in politics, uh, it was these are the guys. We were at these these events, and and Tommy was always connected to these folks. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And, and and to be here today, as Tom Glenn said, uh, I'm the mayor of Boston, and and I think Tommy uh, certainly would probably he'd be like hitting me up with lists now. <laughs> he'd hit up double. Uh, but um, you know, um, you know, I'm honored to be here today uh, to remember Tommy and his family. Uh, thank you for letting me say a few words here today. Um, this park is incredible, as you know, and this, 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 this um, road is incredible. 
Uh, it's something that Tommy Butler had really thought about and talked about in the community. And, and it, it's a way, again, that this community is able to uh, have the burden of having so much, so much economic development in their community with trucks, but also working to get the trucks off the street. And when I think about this, Tommy Butler's kind of um, final assignment, I think, at Massport uh, was to take the, the trucks off the roads of South Boston. Uh, and he did that. Uh, and he did that in a, in a great way, as well as creating opportunities uh, for, for public park space, open space, walkways. Uh, yes, dog parks, it's changed, Southeast changed. There's a lot of dogs over here. Um, but also, I, what he did for so many people, there's not many people that I don't come across that worked at the State House or worked in City Hall that got their start, that, that Tommy Butler got them a, a quick appointment somewhere, whether it was a 30-day appointment, 60-day appointment, 90-day appointment. Uh, he was able to do it, and he was able to be consistent across the lines. Uh, when, you know, when, when President Bulger was the president, obviously, Tommy was able to do really well. And then Birmingham came in, and Tommy was able to keep that connection going. And then Travelini came in, he was able to keep that connection going. And th that's important when you think about that. Here's a guy that came from the neighborhood that was able to, to kind of transform uh, helping people. And it wasn't helping himself, it was helping other people. And that's the difference in public life today, that you, you see people. Some people are in it to help themselves. Tommy Butler was in it to help other people. Uh, I probably can't count the names. <laughs> probably can't count the amount of people that he touched, but th there was a lot. I I'm supposed to talk about the road. I don't have to talk about the road. Um, I just want to say, for me personally, um, probably I'm 50 years old. I probably met Tony Butler when I was probably 19 or 20 years old. Uh, I wanted to get into politics. Um, and when I got into politics, I was fortunate enough to get elected. I served with Jackie Hart in the State House. We we're both state representatives. And, and Tommy was, uh, in a way, to both of us, in some ways, mentor us. He'd come to us, talk to us about different ways how to do things. But he taught us by watching the way to get things done. And he taught us by watching the way to, to just reach out and help other people. That's what he did. Uh, and I am so honored to be standing here today as mayor of the city of Boston uh, that we, we, we cut the ribbon on this important um, asset to this community. And this is, last night I was at the South Boston Health Center um, gala banquet, and Tommy was with us in spirit there last night because he was at every single thing in Southie. And I said there last night at that, that event, South Boston's a special community because of the way people stick together and, and how they, they, stick, they stick together and never forget, never forget their own. And this is another example of the community of this neighborhood, South Boston, sticking together and never forgetting a guy who gave back time and time and time and time again. So I want to thank you for allowing me to say a few words today. I also want to recognize Clerk Mara Doyle, who knew Tommy as well as anybody here. So thank you all for being here today. So you know, we're on the uh, side of the Connolly Container Terminal, and I have to say, uh, Congressman Lynch knows every inch of this property. Um, he has been key to the Balancing Act uh, preserving the working port, you know, with the future of South Boston. Uh, he has worked very closely and has been helpful to us in making sure we keep our eye on the ball, working closely with the ILA, and uh, he made sure that parking spaces were part of the plan. There was another thing he made sure of, but we're not allowed to talk about that anymore. <laughs> so, Congressman Stephen Lynch. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and uh, to Helen Butler and, and Jillian and Tom and the Butler, the extended Butler family. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to just to say a few kind words about my friend Tom, and uh, and about this this project. Uh, I, I want to also thank the people who really put this in motion, along with with uh, Tom Butler, and that of course is the Senate President William Bulger and uh, along with Tom and Jimmy Kelly. God bless Jimmy Kelly. Uh, and my pal Jack Hart, uh, they were really the ones that came up and said, what if we could shut off uh, truck traffic on First Street and create a little road behind here? Uh, and, and then Tom, like he did so many times on our behalf, went back to Massport, worked the state house a little bit, and that's why you see all these state reps and senators. They were paying Tommy hush money, too. <laughs> uh, no question about that, but uh, uh, he was just, uh, look, Tom, the reason this place is packed like this, and the reason we're naming the road for Tommy is 
Tommy loved, loved, loved this community. Loved it. He was just, he's, he was one of us. And uh, from the moment he, he woke up in the morning to the minute he laid his head on his pillow at night, all he did every single day of his life was just try to make life better for the people of South Boston. And he, and he, and he worked on behalf of the people in, in East Boston, too. I, you know, he used to tell me they would give him an earful uh, every once in a while. Every time South Boston got something from Massport, <laughs> East Boston was right there. Uh, me, too, you know. But uh, Tom, Tom was great at that. And, uh, you know, we, we, did, uh, we did squeeze in a... Uh, uh, a dog park back here, and uh, four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth every penny, <laughs> worth every. <laughs> so here's the deal on the dog park. So there were so many people with dogs and so many people with kids up at M Street Park, and it's also Medal of Honor Park, that there was a real competition between the kids and the dogs. So. We said, okay, we got to do something about this. So I went to Tom Glenn. God bless Tom Glenn. And uh, <laughs> but Tommy Butler, he, said he had such foresight, you know, Tommy Butler. So I said, Tom, okay, here's the deal with the, we got to create about 150 parking spaces, but we need this dog park. Otherwise, there's going to be a civil war up there on uh, Medal of Honor Park. And uh, he said, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. He said, but you know, as soon as you get the dog park, you're going to start to hear from the cat people. <laughs> what he said. And as God is my judge, I'm starting to get the calls from the cat people. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the cats, okay? We'll, we'll have to figure that out. But a uh, couple other thanks. We, we are blessed. We are blessed to have Governor Charlie Baker in our corner here in this community. We really are. I don't know if he's everybody in everybody else's district, but he's in my district all the time. I mean, probably a couple of times a week I see him, and uh, you know, he's just been so generous of spirit, and he's got a great team behind him. You know, uh, we had a, uh, an award, the South Boston Community Health Center gave an award to Mary Lou Sutters, who's his Secretary of Health and Human Services. Stephanie Pollock's here, and she's been dynamite on, on trying to help us on, on different issues. Obviously, I'm not having much su success with the FAA. <laughs> they planned this flight because they knew I was going to be talking. But, uh, you know, and, and also the, the other person I want to recognize is, is, is Mayor Walsh. You know, he, he has been just absolutely... He has had our back every step of the way in South Boston. The new fence around Medal of Honor Park, the wonderful job he's doing up there. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just been there at every step of the way. And uh, we, we're just... <laughs> and I want to give a shout out, because I know I got at least a couple of longshoremen out there that, uh, that are here today. Billy McNamara is here from the ILA. Uh, they've, <laughs> the other thing that I just want to point out is uh, how appropriate is this, that this park and this, this freight corridor uh, is being named after Tom Butler. Not only is it beautiful and a great addition to get the trucks off, but just like Tom Butler, that this road is designed to be a buffer, a buffer between, you know, the, the, the heavy industrial activity that happens in the port and the residential community, just like Tom Butler. Tom Butler, when he was, when he was with us so many times, whether it was airplane noise, God bless him, or, you know, truck traffic, he was always there trying to protect the community. And there wasn't a family who got burned out of their house or had a sick child where Tom Butler wasn't there day one, day one, with people like Dodo Nee and others, seeing what the community could do on behalf of that, that, that family or that person. So uh, Tom was one of us. Tom was one of us. And uh, thanks to the kindness of Massport and the kindness of Mayor Walsh and, and Governor Baker, uh, he will never, ever, ever be forgotten. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
Uh, so before I introduce uh, the senator, I just want to mention that uh, Speaker DeLeo really wanted to be here, but the negotiations on the criminal justice bill are ongoing. So he uh, sends his regrets, but he's been, uh, you know, a huge fan. Those of you who were at the uh, ground banking remember his great stories about working with Tommy Butler. So we thank him for his support, and uh, I promised I would recognize him. And Councilor C.B. George is also here, so we want to thank her for being here as well. So, you know, we're all very fortunate that uh, Senator Linda Dorsina Fori was elected. I think we could say that if Tommy had still been around when she was first elected and took responsibility for the breakfast, the first person who would have called her with advice about the breakfast would have been Tommy Butler. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of guy he was uh, in terms of uh, recognizing how the world is changing. So we appreciate her being here today, and please come up and say a few words about Tommy Butler. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This is a celebration, isn't it? The celebration of Tommy's life. Give it up. And so it's an honor for me to be here with all of you as we celebrate, you know, the life and legacy of Thomas J. Butler, the incredible man in South Boston, born and raised, who gave everything to this community that he loved. And I can tell you I knew Tommy because when it was ever the conventions and the Democratic conventions and there was all these meetings taking place, Tommy was there was there to lend a smile and crack a joke. And he knew how to tell some jokes, let me tell you. And I could have used them on my writing team for the St. Patrick's Day breakfast. But it is great that we're doing this today. And I want to thank Tom Glenn and his incredible team for their dedication in making sure that the $75 million investment got completed working with this incredible community called South Boston. So thank you, Tom, for your leadership. <laughs> Now, we know, you know, to work in the private public sector, sometimes it's difficult, isn't it? A lot, a lot of issues. But I want to thank the Butler family. I want to thank Helen for your dedication and love of your community and saying that you're going to give us Tommy so he could do the incredible work. So thank you. And I want to thank Jillian and Tommy Jr., who continues the legacy in walking in his father's footsteps. Thank you for your dedication. <laughs> you know, we have an incredible delegation here in South Boston. And we have those who are now our current folks, right? But I just am so grateful of those who came before us, who set the stage for us to be here and do this work. President Bill Bulger, thank you for your leadership, really, and commitment um, to this incredible community as I follow in your footsteps. And Mary, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor Ray Flynn, Ambassador Flynn, and Kathy for all you've done for this community and continuing to do for the community. My predecessor, Jack Hart, come on, State Senator. <laughs> I know he was happy to pass up the St. Patrick's Day breakfast, though, with the quickness, right? Okay. All right, all right. Um, but now, you know, we have our delegation now, Representative Nick Collins, incredible person, friend that I work with every day, as we continue to fight for state resources coming into this incredible community. Governor Baker, Mayor Walsh, thank you. Congressman Lynch, one of our champions, no doubt. Secretary Pollack, and I say this because as you see the dog park, we're working with the MBTA and MASTA to make sure again that we can get the South Boston community moving and not just stuck on these buses that folks can't get on, right? The seven and the nine. So there's work that's being done. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. All right. So we're working on that. We're working on that, everybody. But no, this is exciting. It's exciting because, my goodness, as we go by this park, this beautiful park, this beautiful, you know, the dog park, it's named after someone that everyone will remember. And there's a placard there that's going to remind us when we come out who was and who still is Tommy Butler. As I was coming off the stage, I'm talking to Helen, and Helen whispered. She said, you know what? You know what Tommy's thinking about? 
Tommy would have been like, where's my bloody Mary? What's going on? This is going, come on, like help me out here. But I think that's what's amazing is the spirit of wanting to care for people. Standing up and saying, if you want to be a partner in a community, then you need to be a true partner in terms of Massport. Listening to the concerns of the residents here and the businesses here. And we thank the longshoremen for all your work. But that's what Tommy was about. It's how do we see one, ourselves in one another. Doesn't matter if you grew up in South Boston or in Dorchester, right? We are in it together because we are rowing in the same direction because we want the same things. So I am blessed to be here with you all this morning and congratulations to all of you. So, you know, we've had a lot of people who have uh, helped us over the last few years to strengthen the working port. Uh, Nick Collins took the leadership in helping us get money for the dredging of the harbor, which triggered a lot of the subsequent investments that uh, the governor and I referred to. So we're very honored that he is able to be with us today and say a few words. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm honored to be here as a state representative of this district um, and a, a childhood friend of Tom Jr. So I have a different perspective of Tom as a, as a, as a father of South Boston. And um, I was telling uh, Clerk Doyle beforehand about a great experience and story. My, I was exciting for many reasons, as I, I got to see Big Tom in action and I got to play my first hockey game up in Lake Placid. And um, for some reason, the, you, know, pa you know, parents and families from all over the Northeast playing in this thing, big, uh, big ruckus breaks out and, um, and there's a, you know, a wrestling match in the, in the lobby of the place. And there's Tom in the middle making sure that, you know, everyone was all right and breaking that up. So that's my early moments with Tom Butler and as I, I saw, um, Big Tom, you know, as a leader at Massport and um, uh, former President Travellini had said it at the breakfast when, um, when he passed in 2011 that he changed the way Massport did business and, and he did it in a way that was uh, better for the community. It allowed the port to continue to grow but in a way that was um, sustainable for, for South Boston, for East Boston. I just listened and I, I asked Bill Linehan who worked in the park system in Boston before his time in the city council and uh, 3,700 trees and shrubs. I, there's no way they've done that in my lifetime in this community. So that's a significant single investment and, um, and a lasting impact for the, for the youth and, and for the families. I, I want to recognize uh, someone who uh, spent a lot of time working with Tom and, and first thank you to Sam Sliman and his team that made sure that this got done as fast as possible and, um, and we're, we're grateful for his leadership here. Um, but the part of the team and the alumni at Massport that were working with Tom on this and on many things to help our community, I see her in the back. I just want to recognize and thank Nancy Donahue for her service on this project. <laughs> the the leaders in government that were mentioned before me um, and also remembering today I saw uh, his brother Eddie, um, retired police captain um, Eddie Walsh, uh, former rep state representative Brian Walsh who was a very close friend of Tommy's and we want to remember him, think about Tommy, uh, Brian today. Uh, Tom's work paved the way for other things. Um, Tom Glenn mentioned uh, my activity and effort working with Senator Ford, he's been a great partner for South Boston in this effort here in the port, getting this park done. So I want to thank her for her, 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 her support and her leadership on this. But um, uh, Tom had, had mentioned the efforts getting funding up the state house. We're grateful for the governor for releasing. I said, what would Tom do here? He'd say, get the money, just make sure you get something for South Boston. And so um, I'm proud to, to say with the help of the mayor and the city council and filed by Councilor Bill Linehan and, and, the, and the support of um, Council Flaherty and Senator Forey and the support of the mayor. Uh, we're creating a foundation here in South Boston, not quite as large as East Boston yet. 
but one that's going to preserve this park across the street here, M Street Park, with a maintenance fund and for youth sports that I think is going to be fantastic uh, for the community for, for many years to come and in a sustainable way. Thank you, Billy, in Tommy's memory. And just uh, before, before I go, I just want to thank the, the Butler family for sharing Tommy with us. It was mentioned before, the extended Butler family. As you can see, it's very large, and they make still make uh, incredible contributions to South Boston and, and in the city. So thank you very much, and thank you for having me. So, you know, uh, typically in this uh, protocol, the next person to speak would be the city councilor from District 2. However, that position recently became vacant. So we asked a private citizen to fill in. <laughs> so please welcome private citizen and South Boston advocate through and through, Bill Linehan. This is pretty cool. I hope you all get one. Thomas J. Butler Memorial Park, a stone. A rock, just like Tommy was. Someone said to me when I came in here, they said, look at all those classic cars, you know. Did Tommy like classic cars? I go, we borrowed a few in our day. <laughs> <laughs> me, JL, Dave Nagel, Tommy in the two-seater down Broadway. Uh, but classic cars? Classic guy, absolutely, classic, <laughs> classic and classy. Uh, Tom Butler and I, um, we're from two large families. Uh, he's the youngest uh, of his family and I'm the oldest. So my mother and his older brothers were classmates. And it's a unique, it can happen here in South Boston because we just don't go away and there's a crossover. And uh, we're not going away, right? <laughs> and um, so we had a unique rela uh, relationship. I met him when we were real young teens. We both started our political career um, in campaigns for, in the very first campaign, for um, Michael F. Flaherty Sr. when he was the, became the state rep here in South Boston, who did an extraordinary job for 20, 26 years. Let's give it up for Big Mike. <laughs> because if it wasn't for Mike, Tommy and I would have been still borrowing cars uh, down in Andrew Square. He gave us a real job. And uh, so Tommy's a real unique person. I mean, the, he embodied a little bit of every one of us. He could do it, he could do it all. And he was relentless. And he had an insatiable appetite for work and to find that next resource he could, not only for his community, but he knew they had, he had to do it for other communities so that he could once again bring home the bacon here to South Boston. It's an honor for me. Uh, uh, I've, I'm in a very unique situation this, this last week or so. And to be part of this activity with all of, all of the, uh, the great men and women who have worked over the 20 years. I was with Joe Roll this morning, and he said he was, an, he was a, um, a student working at Massport when this first came about nearly 20 some odd years ago. And so it takes a long time. It takes a lot of good people. It takes an incredible family who stood by Tommy. I mean, Tommy was an incredible family man, but he was gone a lot. He, he was always on the run, but he was always back there. I don't know if you all know Tommy loved to cook. He loved to eat, he loved to live, had a drink occasionally. I, sh I was fortunate enough to share a few with him. Um, we also share the same birthday. Um, Tom and I uh, were born uh, in December 29th, him in 52 and me in 50. So we always try to get together that day and share it. So on behalf of all the family, all of South Boston, all of you who kept charging away, you know, and. Fortunately for me, I got to work with many of you. Um, we got this done. And to take those trucks off of that street, you know, is, is really, it's unprecedented. 
And then when we did it, we hid them on the other side of the street <laughs> with this gorgeous park that we're going to name after Tommy Butler. So thank you very much. Thank you all. So, Governor, I just want you to know, John Fish passed me a note saying he would have done the dog park for 399000 <laughs> Yeah. So the last elected official, then we want to hear from a friend of Tommy's and from his family uh, that we're going to hear from is Councillor Michael Flaherty, obviously somebody else who knew Tommy very, very well. Uh, he has a citywide responsibility, but obviously South Boston is his first love, uh, and uh, he's one of the most quotable people in uh, elected life. So please welcome Councillor Michael Flaherty. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, and um, I'm glad that uh, Council Linehan had uh, cleared up the vintage car. I thought that Tom Glenn brought in all the cars that hit Tommy Butler over his lifetime. <laughs> a little worried about that. But, but in all seriousness, um, true, that is quotable. But uh, I, uh, my sister Peggy and my brother and I, we literally grew up uh, on Tommy Butler's lap. Uh, and felt that the chaos that uh, we surrounded him with in the early days uh, helped him uh, prepare for, for both Jillian and Tommy to be a dad. And so uh, we were around a lot of that uh, craziness and chaos. And so I speak for my dad, who's not able to be here because he's had the flu uh, on, on behalf of my sister Peggy and my brother John to talk about uh, the love, the friendship, the loyalty uh, from the butlers to the Flaherty's and the Flaherty's to the butler. It, it expands 100 years. And so from them and from all of us, uh, we miss Tommy. And uh, you know we love all of you guys, so uh, thank you for that. And, and some stories maybe about Tommy. Um, when you think about Massport, um, you know wherever Massport touched, Tommy touched. In fact, I believe Tommy was sort of bigger than Massport. Uh, folks, when we went to an event, you didn't want to see the, the executive, the chief executive. You wanted to see Tommy Butler, because he was a doer. I know the cameras are rolling. He was a fixer in the true sense of the word. Um, <laughs> He ran out ground balls, he got the job done, he put people to work. Um, and he was as much loved here in South Boston as he was in, say, East Boston. I know there's a lot of folks here from East Boston, and again, everywhere Massport touched. And I want to recognize one person to kind of show you the depth, and that's going to be uh, Josephine uh, Travellini, uh, 89 years old. Welcome to South Boston, Mrs. Travellini. And So it's, uh, it's true, it's her first time coming over the bridge to South Boston, so welcome uh, through the tunnel. And, um, but it goes to show you, and, and, I, and I, uh, I think I speak for everyone, particularly uh, Tommy, and Tommy's not here, so I'll actually say that it was Tommy that enjoyed your jello shots, right? But I think if truth be told, you actually enjoyed his jello shots. So, uh, but the fact that you're here on behalf of the butlers and, and the South Boston community, we know how, uh, how much you love Tom and probably reminded him a lot of his mother, uh, who many times, Tommy would stick me with driving his mother home. You take my mother home, you take my mother home. She wanted to stay for the latest last call, and so I ended up getting stuck driving her. Um, but again, if you think about Tommy's life, and um, folks here, and I, you know, not just South Boston, not Eastie, Winthrop, and other communities, uh, when we were doing the, the windows and the doors uh, and the soundproofing and the insulation, uh, there were some streets that were sort of just uh, on the line. I know they would call Senate President Bulger's office, they would call my father's office, sometimes they would call the house. They were just off the, uh, off, the, off the decimal level line so that they wouldn't be able to get the doors and the windows and the soundproofing. And, and Tommy did this trick. He didn't just do it in Southie, but he did it in Eastie and Winthrop, um, that he would show up when the guy was doing the decimal readings, and if young Tommy's hockey equipment was in his car, he'd start banging the stick behind him. And there was other times where if he didn't have the hockey bag in the car, he'd ask someone to borrow some pots and pans from the house. And when he didn't know anybody on the street, he would stand behind them and he'd give his bellowing laugh uh, just to get people over the decimal level to help people. And those are the great lengths that Tommy went, not just to put people to work, uh, not to help families, not to solve problems with traffic and parking uh, and freight coming in on the port, but also to recognize that there was real value uh, in that program and, and how it was going to improve people's quality of life. And so uh, those are just little footnotes for Tommy. And so for me and for my family, driving by this park, uh, we'll, we'll be reminded all of Tommy's love and his friendship and his loyalty, but also his wit, his mischief, uh, his great sense of humor, uh, his beautiful smile, and his beautiful laugh. And so 
Uh, we love the Butler family. We miss them, and this is going to be a beautiful opportunity uh, for generations to come to recognize that son of South Boston, uh, who worked extremely hard in this community and, uh, and lived every day to help people, inspired people like myself and others to get into public service, uh, and that's what it's about. And, and to see that uh, his son, uh, Tommy, is sort of following in his dad's foot, is, is, it's encouraging, it's exciting, and uh, we're going to continue to rally around you like your dad rallied around us. So congratulations to the Butler family. Good luck. We love you. So as I mentioned, everybody here was a friend of Tommy Butler's, but we wanted to give a chance for someone who was a close friend of his to say a few words on behalf of all of his friends. So we appreciate uh, Mara Doyle volunteering to represent all the friends of Tommy Butler. So please come up and say a few words. <laughs> I hope you're as frightened as I am right now. <laughs> but honestly, I had no intention of speaking when I arrived here, and I just have to say one thing to him. I am an elected official as well, just so you know. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> anyway, from Winthrop and Dorchester. But I'm in the judicial branch, and you know, Tommy Butler, you know, I sit here and I think about him, and all I can think of or hear is ah, ah, that, that voice, <laughs> that voice, and he'd be saying to you, hello, legs. Like he'd, he had names for me, and then he'd say, Madam Clerk, what brings you here? But more importantly, I mean, everyone has said everything you can imagine that I have thought of as a, you know, when I was asked to speak, suddenly. Um, <laughs> the one thing I c think of is that it really didn't matter where you came from. It didn't matter where you came from. Um, when I was first in office, and I was from Dorchester, and I was involved in Dorchester youth soccer, Suddenly, and I don't know who's going to get in trouble for this, but we, were, we had a container brought over to, Do to Pope John Paul Park that I think was stolen from whatever, wherever the hell you put all those containers. <laughs> we, we quickly painted it. <laughs> Whatever, just take it or get it, get it out of here. <laughs> it's still there, it's beautiful, we love Tommy. Uh, years and years ago when my kids were in St. Brendan's in Dorchester and they were doing a field trip to uh, Castle Island or wherever and they needed buses. I'd be like, Tommy, can't you get everybody buses? Why can't you get me buses? Oh, you're not in the district. Yeah. I said, well, then, you know. All right, don't tell anybody, but I'll send a bus. And next thing you know, everybody thought I was the fixer, but it was Tommy. It was Tommy. It was just remarkable. And when I ran for office for the first time, I'll tell you, he was out on the corner with his kids and his wife and everybody screaming, be loyal to Doyle and threatening people to, if they didn't vote for me, what would happen? And, he just was so full of life. He was just so full of life. And everyone who is here has their story. It isn't that we're all here obligatory, whether as elected officials or just regular citizens. Um, we're here because Tommy Butler touched our lives. And I will never, ever forget it. And I have something that hangs in my office that I was fortunate enough to to get from my predecessor, Richie Rouse. Um, and it's a saying that to me epitomizes Tom Butler. And that the saying says, I shall pass this way but once. Any kindness that I can show, any goodness I can give to another human being, let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. And that's the way he lived his life. That's the way I strive on a daily basis, along with my colleagues in government, to live our lives on a daily basis. Because 
We only passed this way but once, but didn't he pass it so well? Yeah. Thank you, Helen. Imagine how she would have done if we had told her days ago that... <laughs> so, uh, it is important that we turn to hearing from the Butler family. We recognize before Helen and uh, Jillian and uh, Tommy's sister. So we're going to ask uh, Thomas Butler to come up and say a few words on behalf of the family. Then we're going to... Thank you. <laughs> so, all right, come on, come on, come on, sit down, sit down. Um, counselor, I don't, I don't know about classic cars, but in 2000 we drove an 85. So he liked old cars, I know that. <laughs> um, but good afternoon. I want to start by thanking uh, Tom Glenn and the entire Massport family for this amazing honor and humbling tribute to my dad. Governor Baker, Mayor Walsh, Congressman Lynch, Senator Forey, Rep Collins, Councilors Linehan and Flaherty, thank you for your kind remarks and touching stories. And to all of you, you are here today because you shared a special bond with my father. Whether it was a lifelong friendship, or just an interaction in the workplace. You know, on behalf of my entire family, thank you for joining us. Speaking of family, the butlers are here today in full force. I'm joined by my beautiful wife, Kimberly, our three girls, Avery, Amelia, and Ayla, my sister, Jill, whose class is probably thrilled that she took off early on a Friday, she's a school teacher, her wife, Jen, and my beautiful niece, Addison. Um, thank you. We're also joined by many cousins and extended family, my in-laws as well, but by two amazing women who my father loved more than life itself. My Aunt Donna, who's up from Florida, was my dad's best friend from birth. She was a true big sister. She was a two, true big sister that always looked out for her baby brother. She's the only remaining sibling, but I know all your brothers and sisters and Nana and Papa are smiling down today. Last and most importantly, my mother, Helen. Thank you for being our rock and thank you for sharing dad with the rest of the world so he could support and follow his dreams and touch the lives of countless people. Thank you, Mom. So in many ways, this park reflects my father's life. Those brick columns and bronze plaques draw you in and make you feel welcome. Similarly, my father had a big warm smile coupled with that old Irish charm that could make even the biggest outsider feel at home. Like the wall that runs through the park, my father acted as a buffer to the communities he served in his capacity at Massport. As much as he loved traveling down to DC or running through the halls of the State House, his true passion was helping people on a personal level. If, you need, if your team needed new uniforms, your kids needed a summer job, or you were under the flight path, or two streets, three streets over, <laughs> and needed new windows, you could call my dad. The landscaping is over the top, and the bright green lawns are so full. And so, as all you know, that's how my father lived his life. He loved his family, he loved his friends, and he loved having a good time. He was well-traveled, 
and made sure he left his mark wherever he went. The interpretive panels tell the history of South Boston, his beloved South Boston, and flow through the park the same way this community flowed through his veins. It defined who he was. He defended it with loyalty and pride. The history of Evacuation Day, the blue collar work ethic, and the close knit neighbors who always had your back was the essence of the South Boston that my father loved. And the spirit of that South Boston will always live on in this park. My grandfather, Danny Butler, was a Teamsters trucker. And if you ever talked to my dad, he was extremely proud of his father and the connection he had to the port. This road behind the wall, it serves as a commitment that he kept to this community. I did a little research and I saw for the first time back in 1984 that my father stood up at a meeting up to Tynan and said this community needs to get the trucks off of the residential roads. So today, you know, the trucks are off those roads and this community has a little bit of peace and a little bit of quiet as they go about their day and we're grateful for that. And none of this would have been possible without the hard work and passion of Big Tom's staff. And there are a number of you here today, both past and present, and you were part of our family. While he was at work, we knew he was safe because of each of you cared about him as much as we did. Especially to Elena and Anthony for putting on, for being the leads on this amazing event. Thank you so much. I want to close by reiterating something that Trav said shortly after my dad passed. He described him as someone who wasn't afraid to help people, regardless of the blowback or the consequences. Helping people in this day and age has somehow taken on a negative connotation, and that's a shame. I can assure you that if it wasn't for people like Jack Hart, Trav, and John Fish, I would not be standing up here today. So thank you, all of you. So lastly, in those last couple days, when things got worse, Dad made me make him a promise that we'd be all right. As I look out here today, we're doing just fine. Thank you.